Hello everyone and welcome to another of my videos. I'm David Forino and this is AI Solutions. I have to apologize first for such a long time without uploading a video, but I've been working on some projects as well as uh, working on publishing a research paper. And yes, I also got this bad guy. As you saw from the intro, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a surveillance system using just a Raspberry Pi. This is a project that requires very little budget and is great to be implemented in our Smart Home AI project. Ok, so enough talking and without further ado, let's get started! Ok, so first of all I want to mention that this project will work with any Raspberry Pi but as you know you need to have a standoff for the Raspberry Pi camera plus you also need a power supply for the, for the Raspberry and it might be a little bit not comfortable to, to be placed in some spots of your house. If you want to have an all-in-one solution like in my case uh, here are two examples. So I 3D printed uh, two cases. Here you can see in different colors. One for the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus and one for the Raspberry Pi 0W. The reason why I chose those two boards is because Raspberry Pi 0W, of course, it's foam factor and the fact that it requires very low energy. On the other hand, the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus gives more power, more raw power for the computation but still not as much as the Raspberry Pi 4 since we don't need so much power and also of course consumes less energy so that's also great for a portable solution. So in those cases, in those two cases, we have a all-in-one solution so we have a battery and also a spot for the, for the camera and also for the board. Regarding the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus uh, that I have here, as you can see, it's a pretty simple constructor so it's a 3D printed case uh, where we can access all the uh, ports from, from the board as well as the SD card and you can also see that we have a power bank and a Pi camera uh, placed in the center and then we have also a slot on the side of the case to recharge the power bank. This is a solution very simple to put together. Uh, as you can see it's really just a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus with the uh, Pi camera as well as the high output power bank. So in case you are uh, not willing to, to try or you're not able to solder, this is a very simple solution to put together and there are also no screws. Every goes with pr everything goes with pressure so it's uh, absolutely easy to uh, put together. Then here we have a Raspberry Pi 0W as I mentioned. Uh, this is a very compact form factor, it's actually the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 0W itself, it's just a bit wider uh, because it also incorporates a LiPo, um, LiPo battery and also we can see uh, here on top we have a, a switch. Also here is very straightforward, so we have a 3D printed case and the Raspberry Pi uh, runs on, instead of on a, a power bank, in this case runs on a LiPo battery. Then here you can see that on the back of it we have two components uh, covered by electric tape. Uh, one is, is uh, serve the purpose of charging actually the LiPo battery and the other part is a step up to convert the 3.7 volts from the LiPo battery into 5 volts that is accepted from the Raspberry Pi. And also here you can see that from one side we can recharge the the LiPo battery without actually unmounting and also in this case everything goes with pressure so there are no screws and nothing like that. It's not complicated to build it's just you need a little bit of skill since everything needs to be soldered uh, pretty compact together. You can find all the components together with the build instruction of course on my website and I will leave the link in the video description down below. Okay so here we are in a fresh install of the Raspberry Pi OS. This is the desktop version as you can see. So first thing we need to do is to clone the repository. So we're gonna type in a new terminal, git clone and then the link to the repository. Press enter. Now we can see that we have downloaded the surveillance pi directory so we can go into it. 
at this point we can see that we have some uh, files so instruction images the license readme file setup and then the actual python script so what we need to do to set up the raspberry pi is simply type sudo bash setup.sh press enter this is going to take several hours because it needs to update uh, install all the necessary libraries and then build the OpenCV and some other libraries that we're going to need in our uh, Python script. So be patient and let it go. Meanwhile, the setup script is running. I want to show you how to configure the Gmail so that you can send emails. So first of all, you need to have a Gmail account. That's important, otherwise it won't work. And if you head up on my repository, in the readme, then you can see all the necessary steps to configure your Gmail account because you will have to set up a, a app password and a two-step uh, two verification. So if you just go through the uh, file itself, then you can see that there are some links to go to the security settings of your Gmail account. I highly recommend not to use your main uh, Gmail account, instead to create a new one anyways for free. And then you will see, you will have to go to, uh, once you click on the link, you need to locate this uh, signing into Google. Then you need to activate the two-step verification. Here there is a, a bullet point step-by-step -step tutorial you will see. Then you can go on the app passwords and here this is going to be how it looks like uh, you need to click on uh, select app click on other give it a name whatever you like and then uh, you can click on generate and then it will give you a 16 character password you have to copy that password and then uh, you need to open the uh, surveillancepy.py script you can use any editor for that then you need to locate the send notification um, function within the file and you will see it's right at the beginning of the file and you need to add uh, the, the email information and the password that we just generated so the sender email is going to be the, the email where you created the, uh, the password receiver email is where you want to send this email so it can be your main email address and uh, and the password is the password that we just generated. Once you have done all of this, then everything is going uh, to be fine. Once the setup script is finished and you have also generated the password for your Gmail account, you need to open again the terminal and type sudo raspi-config, press enter. Then you need to go down and go to interface option and then you have here the pi camera so click on that and you need to enable it so go to yes press enter then it said it's enabled you can just exit the script and it's gonna ask you to reboot now so just reboot okay so now we can see the usage of this python script so we can type within the folder surveillance pi, we can type python3 surveillance pi dot pi minus h. Press enter. And this shows the help command. So there are some optional arguments. Let's quickly go through it, uh, through them and then we see uh, what to use and what each one of these does. So uh, minus h, basically the help shows this uh, window. So this information minus b uh, enable bounding box drawing on original image so if you want to see the bounding box on the um, on actually what is detected uh, you can enable it by uh, giving this argument then we have the s or show argument which actually show the image live on screen this is important at the beginning when we are uh, setting up all the parameters for the script to have a visual understanding of what's going on then we have the threshold parameter. So this is a value uh, to, to detect a motion. The higher the threshold, the more uh, difficult, uh, the, the, the less noise is going to pick. Okay? So depending on your environment, the threshold is the first parameter that you want to adjust. Uh, 
Uh, by default, it's 80, so dep really depends on the light condition and uh, what's the background and, and so on. You, you just need to play around with this and find the best parameter. Then we have max FPS, which is the maximum FPS desired. By default, it's 5 frames per second. Uh, I really don't suggest to go higher than this, really because it's not necessary and consume way more energy. Um, if you have a, a Pi Zero, I see that 5 frames a second is uh, actually the limit. For the uh, Raspberry Pi 3A+, Plus, actually you can go higher than that. Uh, but you can also reduce it, so you can go to 2 or 3 frames a second, that's up to you. Then we have Pause parameter, so it's the initial pause before the, the script actually starts to run and is in seconds. Then we have mean area, which is actually the value for the minimum area to be considered uh, when creating the bounding boxes. Then we have the email timer, which is uh, the number of seconds that the program is going to wait before a notification email is sent. So as soon as it detects some um, motion, okay, some uh, something changing in the in the scene, it starts this timer and it has to be consistent for n number of seconds uh, before the notification email is sent. So this helps to avoid to pick up some uh, random noises or something that might happen uh, when, the, when the script runs. And by default, this is set to 1.5 seconds. So every 1.5 seconds of consistent motion is going to send one picture as an email. You can increase this if you prefer. Uh, but I will not set it too high because if, uh, for example, 20 seconds, then you really need to have somebody standing in front or something changing for a long time. So that's maybe too much. But also you don't want to have too low value for that. In case we set that value as a negative, then it will not send any email. So during the setup uh, of, of the parameters, so the test that we're going to run, maybe we don't want to, to send an email. So we just set this uh, as a negative value. Okay, so now we can run the script with some parameters. In this case, uh, I've launched, of course, Python 3, surveillance by the pi, and then we're gonna draw the bounding box on the image. So I give the minus b, and then also the minus s because I want to show what's happening. Then I set the email timer to minus one, so a negative value, so we will not send any email and I reduce the threshold to a level of 50. So we can execute the code. It's waiting for five seconds now to take the background image. And now we can see the live stream of five frames per second. We can see here on the terminal and we can now put an object in front and we can see that it detects it and it draws a bounding box on it. You can, of course, play around with the parameters, so to, to change the threshold or to remove the bounded box uh, and uh, basically set up the way that you want it. Once you've found the parameters uh, that work the best in your case, uh, then you can just run the program. In this case, then I just added the bounding boxes because I want to draw those bounding boxes and they kept the threshold. And then in case you can change also the email timer, and uh, I remove, of course, the show, and then you can just uh, launch it. You can decide to run the script on a, uh, when it boots up the Pi or when some events occur. Uh, it depends on the configuration. You can eventually also synchronize it that when you are at home, you disable the script, and when you leave the home, then it starts automatically. This is completely up to you. Okay, so now for the people which are interested in the code, uh, I will briefly go to the code and show you actually what it's happening and what each part of the code does. So at the very beginning, of course, we import all the necessary modules that we need. Then here we can see already the first function, the send notification. So it will accept an image. So basically what is captured from the camera. And then with the parameters that also get set before about the sender, receiver email and the password, First, we encode the image into uh, bytes with this simple line of code. And then we uh, set up a message object. Uh, then we pass all the information and we send it as an attachment, the, the image. Then we go into the pre-processing. So this step is done for, for each frame. Okay, So that's what uh, it's done right after the camera 
as capture one frame. So first thing is to convert the RGB into grayscale image with this part. This is because to uh, basically compare also with threshold and Gaussian blur, then we need to have a grayscale image. Um, so then after the image is converted to uh, grayscale, we apply a Gaussian blur with a kernel of 21 by 21. Uh, the reason why we do this is to basically smooth the image. Uh, this, this helps not to, to find some uh, potential noise. Uh, then we have this function, draw bounding boxes. So here is pretty straightforward. We uh, basically just draw the bounding boxes on it. Uh, we use uh, the find contours function. And then we pick only the bounding boxes which are above the minimum area, so the parameter that we set in the in the script. And then we combine all the bounding boxes together so that we will have only one big bounding box and not many multiple bounding boxes. Um, and so for, that's it for this function. Then we have here the argument parser so that we can parse all the arguments uh, from, from the command line. Uh, then we go into uh, this part. So this is the, um, we, we instantiate a camera object and then we get the, the background frame. So we need to have the first frame to basically compare it with all the other frame that we will capture later on. And here I created a for loop, so because sometimes the, the camera takes some time uh, before actually uh, giving back an actual frame. Uh, so it tried to get it for 120, 120 times. And if for 120 times nothing happens, then we'll, uh, we'll crash with the, with the problem. So if something like this happens, that means the camera is actually not working. So you need to make sure that you have enabled the Pi camera. After that, we start with the infinite loop. So we start by taking the start time, then we capture the, the, the frame, the original frame. Uh, we pre-process that frame uh, that we will use it for comparison. Uh, then we capture a delta frame. So basically we compute the absolute different, uh, difference between the two uh, frames with this function with OpenCV. We apply the thresholding and we give the, um, the thresholding value that we pass from the uh, arguments in the, in the Python script. After that, if we have enabled it, we draw bounding boxes onto the original image. And then here is the part in which we send the notification email. So we check on the timer, uh, we, we start the timer if, it, um, if it's not started yet and after uh, the actual timer that we have set up, then eventually we send a, a notification email. Uh, and this part is that actually to add a delay, so to, to match the frames per second that we specified um, in, the, in the argument of the script. And finally, in case we are showing the, uh, the live stream, we also give the possibility of pressing Q to uh, quit the, the, the script and printing also the information about the FPS. Once that's done, we simply just release the camera and we destroyed all the windows. Whether you want to implement AI into your business or you just need consultancy from a machine learning expert, I'm the right person for you. From acquiring data till deployment, my multiple years experience will provide you full support which will help you to boost your business. To find out more, check the link in the video description. So that's it for this video. If you guys like my content, you can support me on Patreon, where you can speak directly with me, and also I can give you advice on how to get started into this career. Another way to support this channel is to use my affiliate link that I give in the video description for your purchases at no cost for you. Finally, another way to support me is to subscribe and share this video on social media. So I thank you for now and I hope to see you in my next video.